Incidents of farmer suicides and the economy growing at a at below the national average. Many opportunities were lost and problems accumulated as a result of the deliberate neglect of Telangana in the erstwhile state of Andhra Pradesh. We thought there was no point in brooding over the past, neglect and be deterred by the challenges before us. We did not want such a serious crisis to go waste and took it as, a, as an opportunity to do things that were not done before to meet the suppressed aspirations of our people. We started the process of reinventing and reorienting the state to realize the goal of Bangaru Telangana, that is Golden Telangana. We took a number of programs to alleviate the hardship of people and to put the Telangana economy on a higher growth trajectory. <coughs> we have submitted a detailed memorandum indicating the first of its kind initiatives taken by the state government since its formation in June 2014 and presenting our views and the terms of reference of the Commission, my officials will be making presentations on, the, on some of these programs. Therefore, I will restrict myself to a few important issues relating to the role of the Finance Commission in promoting cooperative fiscal federalism and making the states fiscally stronger. <coughs> At the time of the making of the Indian Constitution, the primary concern was preserving the unity of the country in the aftermath of the partition of the country and the problems associated with integration of numerous princely and diverse states. Therefore, by design, the Indian constitution was adopted with significant centripetal bias in the distribution of fiscal powers between the center and states. Added to this, center has been increasingly intruding into the state subjects by running numerous centrally sponsored schemes, shifting subjects from the state list to concurrent lists and introducing new schemes in state subjects without any prior consultation with the states. As per the assessment made by the 14th Finance Commission, the center's expenditure on state subjects increased from an average of 14% of its total expenditure to 20% and on subjects in the concurrent list from an average of 13% to 17% between 2002-05 and 2005-11. This is indicative of the excess fiscal space available with the center, a major part of which can easily be shared with states through higher tax devolution. The centers recourse to levy of stresses and surcharges on a permanent basis has significantly reduced the divisible pool of central taxes, <coughs> affecting the interests of the states currently. Stresses and surcharges account to 14.3% of the gross tax revenue of the center. Even after some of the cases, stresses are subsumed under GST. What is also a matter of great concern is that proceeds of road sales and clean energy sales are not being passed on to states, fully repeatedly pointed out by the call. Short transfer of road sales amounted to Rs. 72,726 crores and that of clean energy sales to Rs. 44,505 crore at the end of 2017-18. With the natural resources remaining untapped, people deprived of minimum needs, agriculture which supports over 50% of the country's population, mired in distress. The time has come to take a comprehensive view of union-state relations and to realign the resources in favor of the states, which are assigned functions touching on the lives of the people. Now the states are mature enough to formulate their plans and prioritize their expenditure to suit the needs of the people 
being closer to them. States are found to be lot more fiscally prudent than the centre. The Gujarat and Kerala models of development were being talked about previously. Now it is the Telangana model of development which has taken the centre stage. The Cabinet resolution setting up of the Niti Ayo generated hopes of building Team India, making states equal partners in nation's development and promoting cooperative fiscal federalism. It also stated categorically that one-size-fits-all approach inherent in central planning and schemes have the potential of creating needless tensions and undermining the harmony needed for the national effort. These hopes remained unfulfilled. The Honorable Prime Minister in his letter to Chief Ministers was categorical in, the, in stating that states should be allowed to chalk out their own programs and schemes with greater financial strength and autonomy and expressed his strong conviction that strong states make a strong India and that the progress of the country depends on the progress of the states. So far, no decisive steps have been initiated in fulfilling these commitments. I strongly believe that as a constitutional institution for resource transfers to states, the 15th Finance Commission has a decisive role in taking these imperatives forward and paving the way for path-breaking reforms in Indian fiscal federalism in consonance with changing realities. The recent finance commissions have been assigning higher weightage equity to parameters like distance of per capita income in their tax devolution formula. We are not against preferential treatment to backward states. What we are worried about is that higher weightage to equity parameters has not served its purpose. Income inequalities across states have been increasing and the performing states are feeling discriminated. The Finance commission, Commission's transfers are mostly restricted to the revenue account and kickstart go, growth momentum in backward states. What is needed is capital infusion. Therefore, there is a need for the separate institutional mechanism to support the capital needs of backward states outside the Finance Commission. We therefore strongly urge the Finance Commission to strike a balance between equity and efficiency in their dispensation so as to ensure that the performing states are not penalized. Now I will briefly present before you my views on some of the terms of reference given to the Commission, which are of great concern to us. The Commission has been asked to take into account the impact of the substantial increase in tax devolution recommended by the previous Commission, coupled with the continuing imperative of National Development Agenda, including New India 2022. The tax devolution recommended by the previous Commission has not imposed any additional fiscal burden on the Union, and the fiscal space of the Union remained the same, but only resulted in a compositional shift in favour of tax devolution. The actual outcomes in the first three years, the total revenue account transfers as percentages of gross receipts of the centre more or less remained the same as in the pre-awarded period. Taking into account the requirements for New India 2022 may result in reducing fiscal transfer to states. Following the recommendations of the 14th Finance Commission, the centre had Centre had dispensed with a number of programs like BRGF, model schools and increased the matching contributions to states in respect of number of centrally sponsored schemes. Telangana suffered a double whammy with these developments and reduction of its share in tax devolution. I am confident that the 15th Finance Commission will adopt a judicious approach while dealing with these considerations and ensure a higher flow of resources to states, taking into account the reality that the development of the nation lies in the development of states. One of the considerations itself 
listed out in the TOR relates to the conditions that the center may impose while giving consent to state to raise loans. When the states are adhering to fiscal responsibility regime and containing their deficit at 3% of GSDP and maintaining revenue balance, borrowings are obviously used for meeting capital expenditure. In such a situation, there does not seem to be any justification on the part of the center to think in terms of imposing conditions while giving consent to states to borrow. In this context, I urge the Finance Commission to recommend continuation of the facility of additional borrowings over the over and above the 3% of GSDP limit to states which are fiscally prudent and have shown improvement in their own revenue collections. This will facilitate the states to put their ongoing projects on fast track and to reduce cost and time overruns. The Commission may consider raising the additional borrowing facility to 1% of GSDP. The 15th Commission has been asked to consider proposing measurable performance-based incentives to states in a number of areas. I will only touch upon two areas, the inclusion of implementation of flagship programs of Government of India and exclusion of similar programs of the state government from the purview of incentive grants in a matter of serious concerns. The expenditure on flagship programs of the centre in a state is a minuscule of the total expenditure incurred by a state in a year. I request the Commission to incentivize the states in the implementation of their own flagship programs which are much better designed than the one-size-fits-all programs of the centre, most of which are in the state subjects. Another performance-based incentive relates to the control or lack of control incurring expenditure on populist measures. There are no objectives, objective criteria to categorize schemes into populist and non-populist. India being so vast and diverse, the needs differ from state to state and within a state from district to district. When the government of Tamil Nadu introduced the midday meal scheme, it was dubbed as populist. Similarly, the employment guarantee scheme launched by the government of Maharashtra was criticized. The same schemes were later adopted by the government of India. Similarly, the Raidu Bandhu scheme introduced by Telangana is being replicated in other states and recently the government of India too launched it. It's covering the entire country though in a much diluted manner. Therefore, the introduction of welfare schemes is better left to the states. The fifth, <coughs> the fifth Finance Commission expressed difficulties in taking a call on the propriety of policies of states and regulating grants based on any judgment regarding particular policies being adopted by individual states. I earnestly hope that this Commission too adopts a similar approach. I would like to flag another important issue for the consideration of this Finance Commission. In the interest of tax harmonization, states have compromised their autonomy and extended unstinted support to center in introducing GST. Sales tax what the only major resource of own tax expenditure of states has been subsumed under GST. Even after subsumation of union excise duties and tax services, the center is still left with buoyant resources of revenue like income tax, corporate, corporation tax and custom duties, while GST has subsumed around 31 of the gross tax revenue of the center. It has subsumed much larger portion of states own tax revenue around 50 percent. As the states have sacrificed their fiscal autonomy, I request the Finance Commission to suitably compensate the states in the form of higher tax devolution. The formula proposed by the state for tax devolution it is primarily guided by the imperative to strike a balance between equity and efficiency. We cannot improve 
the lot of backward states by pulling down the performing states taking into account the dire need to realign resources in favor of states and the fiscal autonomy foregone by states in the interest of tax harmonization we request the commission to increase tax devolution to 50% of the divisible pool of central taxes this can easily be accommodated by the center by reducing its expenditure on state subjects let me also briefly highlight the state specific requirements in a few important sectors i'll focus mainly on local bodies mission bagiratha and the maintenance of litigation projects we have taken decisive steps to strengthen the local bodies and make them more accountable we have enacted a few panchayat raj new panchayat raj act and increased the number of grama panchayat from 8368 to 12751 similarly the number of municipalities have gone up from 74 to 142 we request the finance commission to significantly increase the grants to rural as well as urban local bodies the need for such an increase has been elaborated in our memorandum the government has been according utmost priority to provide irrigation facilities to 1 crore 1.24 crore acres in fulfillment of this objective we have first fast track the number of ongoing projects whose implementation remain neglected in the combined state we have taken up the prestigious kalestrum litigation project to provide irrigation facilities to over 18 lakh acres in 13 districts of the state at an estimated cost of rupees 80000 crore since the state is located on the upstream of the river rivers godavari and krishna there is hardly any scope for surface irrigation invariably we have to depend on litigation projects which are meant <coughs> maintenance incentive the maintenance cost of the litigation projects during the award period of 15th finance commission is estimated at 40169 crore we request the commission to support the state government by recommending this amount as a maintenance grant as the commission is aware another prestigious program taken up by the state is mission bagiratha to provide treated and pipe drinking water to every household in the state this will solve the recurring incidence of water borne diseases once and for all the mission is nearing completion in a few months from now the maintenance cost of the mission is estimated at rupees 10140 crore in respect of rural component and 2580 crores for the urban component for the five year period that is 2020225 we request the commission to provide a grant amounting 12722 crore <coughs> we are making efforts to put in place a system of levying user charges but it will take time therefore these grants are needed only in the initial 5 years i am sure that the finance commission will support the state as these are first of its kind projects taken up anywhere in the country i am very confident that the 15th finance commission under the dynamic and able leadership of sri nk singh ji will herald a new era in indian fiscal federalism making the states fiscally stronger and thereby enabling them to tap the immense growth potential that the country is bestowed with it we try and make it stand out as a strong and vibrant nation in the world we are also confident that the commission's recommendations will pave the way for bringing about realignment of resources with functional responsibilities i profusely thank the commission for taking making it convenient to visit the state i hope all of you will have a comfortable stay in this historic and hospitable city of hyderabad jai hind sir i will take With your permission, sir, I'll take this as an opportunity. Janato, 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 Janato,
zoom gördü ya. Hadi hadi. Hadi hadi. 